traveling allows us to play what if on a scientific basis. That's a quote from the uh, former Pennsylvania um, DEP staff member James Toothaker. It really kind of uh, describes what we're trying to do when we model a, uh, a building or systems within a building to understand what will happen when we do something w without actually going to the um, trouble of building it and measuring it. We can, we can build it virtually and understand that. Very simplistically, from a thermal perspective, the more glazing we have, the higher energy consumption because as we have more glazing, glazing typically is, is not as high performing as the opaque portions of the envelope. And so we've got increased heat loss during the winter, increased heat gain uh, during the summer, as well as increased heat gain from, from transmission as well as through uh, the direct solar heat gain through the glazing. And so pretty linear as we get more glazing, more energy consumption. Of course, that's only half of the picture. When we look at daylighting and the ability to reduce artificial lighting, we see that as we increase the amount of glazing, there is an ability to turn off more and more lighting. But we get to a point where we've got enough light and we don't need any more. So once we've turned off all the lights, there's no additional benefit of providing more uh, daylight from an energy perspective. And so we come to an integrated analysis. Decided design goes, early modeling leads you to a building performance to whatever targets you've set. But if you actually were using these goals or the integrated analysis to define your goals, then revisiting what the goals were based on the answers you got and feeding that back into the modeling and making it a interactive process, you will see that you have a better building performance. And what it also does is it's really cost effective because you're using limited set of models or models which talk to each other instead of having 10 different consultants work on 10 models, which is really not cost effective. It also answers some of the early design questions so you can, if you really think it's, let's say for an example, you have a facade which you think needs shading. So you need to analyze that before you actually go and put shading on it. And the modeling can actually give you answers that the kind of shading you're thinking may not be effective at all. So that can effectively reduce your construction cost and that's how it's cost effective. I think the number one lesson I want to pass on to folks is that you don't need to design the entire building to analyze it. This is the source of endless, endless frustration. We have now with LEED and other requirements moved energy modeling into the mainstream, but we're seeing, as it's need to mention earlier, over and over again we're just seeing validation models. People design it and then they run a model to say yes, the design looks good, or no, the design is not meeting the requirements. But what we want to be doing is using these tools as part of the design process. You don't have a finished design when you're using, using these tools to get away from validation modeling and get to be design modeling.